everyone for joining the damn God as we go to somewhere very, very important. We are currently in the Chattanooga National Cemetery at the site of dozens of burials of Medal of Honor recipients. For this week's video, we are going to be going to the National Medal of Honor Heritage Museum here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. This is going to be a video very different from the ones I usually do. It is going to be a very intense and emotion-filled video, so prepare yourself. But let's go ahead and get to the National Medal of Honor Heritage Museum and see the stories of our nation's most coveted heroes. So you guys just hang in there and let's go check this place out. Alright, so we are inside of the Medal of Honor Museum right now and I am in this really interesting portion of the museum. Now if you look around, they have this set up. This is one amazing museum. They have all of these interactive panels showing a whole lot of different things as well as these interesting artifacts. This is the Badge of Merit, which was given by George Washington to soldiers that went above the call of duty and is what many people trace back to the beginning of the idea of the Medal of Honor. Of course, the Badge of Merit later on became synonymous with the Purple Heart, which you can see right next to it, which that really amazes me over there. And then there's just, they have this, all this history about their Certificate of Merit. And then this is an amazing, just absolutely amazing thing here at this museum. This is an original copy of the Declaration of Independence. Original copy, what does that mean? It means that it was hand drawn and engraved. When they first started making copies of this, this was the first copy of the Declaration of Independence ever made and it was actually, they, he did such a good job at it that it was endorsed by many signers of the Declaration of Independence for its accuracy to the original, including Thomas Jefferson. And then over here, see they have all these amazing things. This is the Army Medal, the Army and the Navy Medal of Honor. This is what the first Medal of Honors look like that would have been given by Abraham Lincoln. Now something that I didn't know is that the Medal of Honor actually has it ties back to the Civil War and that there has actually been a woman that received the Medal of Honor. She worked, she actually studied to become a doctor, but due to the fact she was a woman during the Civil War, she was unable to actually get a position as a doctor, so instead she worked as a nurse and went way above the call of duty, risking her own life and limb many times to save those around her. And for that, she was actually the first and so far the only woman granted the right of Medal of Honor. Now, when you come here to this museum, this screen right here is what amazes me. You can just scroll on through, let's see, War on Terror. And then you can click on these little individual sections and it will tell you people who got the Medal of Honor during these campaigns. Really interesting. Let's see. For instance, one of the ones that I am the most familiar with, I think this one. Let's see. There we go. Desmond Doss. 
who is actually the person that the movie Hacksaw Ridge was based off of. A medic that refused to pick up arms and served as a conscious objector that entire time, saving 75 people on his own. Which, by the way, the number 75 is the one that Desmond agreed to. The people there said that the number was much higher than 75. He said that it could not be anywhere near 75, but they decided to go ahead and meet middle ground where they considered 75. Now we're gonna go deeper into the museum to see even more interesting things here at the Charles H. Coolidge National Medal of Honor Heritage Center here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Tour, which actually follows the beginning of the Met Award that we now call the Medal of Honor, which was first given to Andrews Raiders. Now, Andrews Raiders were a group of 22 volunteers in 1862, Union soldiers who volunteered to go south to the town of Marietta, just north of Atlanta, to steal a train. They were to steal this confederate train and drive it all the way up to Chattanooga destroying rail lines and telecommunication posts along the way to completely disrupt the means of communication for the confederate soldiers while the Union came into Chattanooga for the Battle of Chicam um, Chattanooga which eventually was called the Battle of Chickamauga which I've done several videos at the Chickamauga battlefield. While that was happening, they were doing this daring race, going under the cover of civilians, wearing civilians' uniforms, knowing that if they were caught, then they would be hung, tried and hung as spies. These are the men. Some escaped, some were tried and hung as spies and then the last six were exchanged as part of a slave trade or as part of prisoner of war trades one of these sticks out among the rest that is marion ross who is officially the first person to ever be awarded the medal of honor as you go through this museum, it tells other amazing things about the Medal of Honor, as well as other recipients for the Medal of Honor, such as William J. Carson, John Kiggins, and it has these amazing exhibits, as well as just showing these amazing things that you would have seen as part of the war during the Civil War. We also have something that just blows me away. This is Mary Edwards Walker, the first and only female to be awarded the Medal of Honor. Earlier you heard me talk about her as the lady who was unable to work as a doctor but instead became a nurse. She was done so many amazing things, including being captured as a prisoner of war for four months. She was the assistant surgeon in charge of female prisoners at Louisville, Kentucky, and was the first to come through with some amazingly revolutionary treatments. Here we actually see the type of equipment she once would have used, as well as what her medical box would have looked like, complete with the glass bottles. Absolutely amazing place. In 
here at the museum after we went through that section with the train and we learned a little bit about the history it showed us brought us into this portion which tells the six biggest attributes i suppose you'd say to those that are medal of honor recipients those are commitment sacrifice integrity courage citizenship and patriotism it has all of these amazingly interesting portions of the museum as well as having several real medal of honors inside of this building uh, the first one that we go into is the citizenship which covers battles of world war one and world war ii as you can see here the great war talking about joseph bernard adkins who solo charged a machine gun nest with nothing more than his rifle and his bayonet he charged it himself jumping over barbed wire and dodging machine gun fire to capture this section of the machine gun nest this area was called the Hindenburg Line and five of Tennessee's Medal of Honor recipients in World War I charged this line to secure victory for the Allied forces. Now this portion of the museum is by far my most favorite one. We are here at the exhibit for Desmond T. Doss, known as the hero without a gun. Desmond T. Doss was one of the only Medal of Honor recipients to be a conscientious objector. What that means is that he, while he was going to serve, he refused to pick up a firearm due to his religious beliefs. And through his entire service, he never once touched a gun. There was a battle known, made famous by the movie Hacksaw Ridge where Desmond T. Doss joined his unit climbing up a 75 foot cliff face on the island of Okinawa. He battled against machine gun fire, mortar fire, artillery fire, grenades, all used against his men, which caused his men to retreat back down the mountain, but he refused to retreat knowing that there were wounded that needed his help. So he stayed up there even after all of his comrades left, not having a firearm to protect himself with, and began lowering injured men down the cliffside, as you can see here. The official number of men that he was said to have saved is 75. Desmond T. Doss was known to say that the 75 number was way too high. Of course, those that were around him said that it was much higher than 75. So they all agreed to just settle with 75. He is quoted with saying, Lord, please help me get one more until there are none left and I'm the last one down. Now this portion over here is what really just made the whole museum stick for me. We have Desmond Doss's real uniform. And here, that is his Medal of Honor that was awarded to him for his actions. And for those of you guys that have watched the movie, you will remember where he got in a fight with his father and his father pulled out a pistol. And it was that moment that made Doss decide that he was never going to pick up a firearm again. This is the real Colt Police Pause Special 3220. This is the real pistol that belonged to his father. This is the weapon that made him decide to never pick up a firearm after touching this one. After all, he believed in the Ten Commandments. And the one that stuck to him the most was thou shall not kill. Now, there is one thing that I just learned about Desmond Doss 
So at the end of Hacksaw Ridge, you see him kicking or you know getting rid of a Japanese grenade. He stepped on a Japanese grenade to protect his buddies and was wounded. The movie ends there, but there's actually another scene that you don't see. While they're trying to carry him away, they see another injured man, or rather, Desmond Dawes sees another injured injured man. He tells him, "Put me down." pick him up he is worse off than me while he's waiting for his friends to come by another shell goes off nearby fracturing his arm he grabs a rifle a broken rifle next to him breaks off the rifle butt and uses it to splint his own arms before crawling 300 feet or sorry 300 yards to the first aid station where he was then loaded up and carried off they asked Mel Gibson why he didn't include this portion in the movie. He said, and I quote, Well, I was afraid that people would think that it wasn't realistic because of what he did. So much knowledge here. If you are ever coming through the Chattanooga area, you need to come to this museum. Listen, I have learned more today than I have learned than I learned in my entire high school career. Let me just put it that way. Absolutely amazing. Now one amazing thing about this little section of the museum is they have this portion for the Vietnam War, the living room war, where they have it set up like a living room during the Vietnam War, which is true. This was the first one that was ever publicized on TV, which completely changed the dynamic of how we viewed war. It was no longer viewed as this righteous, heroic thing that was romanticized like the Great War and World War II. Instead, it was seen for what it really was. A horrible, bloody conflict. Now, there is one more little portion before we go to their the Tennessee Hall of Valor and the changing exhibit that they have here. And I just wanted to show off, we'll tell the story of one of my most favorite Medal of Honor recipients because he is a local that lives here in Chattanooga. That is Kyle Carpenter. Now on November 21st, 2010, Kyle Carpenter was part of a 14 man squad in the Majaris district patrolling an area of three villages controlled by the Taliban. His Marines were tasked with setting up a new patrol base in one of the villages in a compound of buildings surrounded by high walls and reinforced by sandbags. While they were setting this up, they were attacked during a daytime raid. Kyle Carpenter was atop one of the rooftops, like taken in these photos taken by him when a grenade was thrown up right beside him. To protect his fellow Marine, Lance Corporal Nick Euphrasio, he jumped on top of the grenade, taking the blast. Through a miraculous ability, he was able to push through, even though his injuries were so severe. His right arm were, alone had 30 fractures, and his lower jaw was completely missing, along with most of his teeth. The rest of his body was severely disfigured. He was brought to the Walter Reed National Mil Military Medical Center and was resuscitated three times. He was in a coma for five weeks before waking up. They performed multiple restructive surgeries over two years. He spent almost three years at the hospital. This medal, this photo was taken of him in June of 2014 whenever President Barack Obama awarded him with the Medal of Honor. Now, the last exhibit here at the Medal of Honor Museum is actually a traveling exhibit, meaning that more or less each time you come here, they have something new in this exhibit. This one is experience in Europe. 
And I need to be careful when showing some of these artifacts because YouTube will flag anything with that flag there. So I have to, well, we'll see if I can get away with it. Seeing as this is a captured Nazi flag. This entire booth is filled with war trophies, including this Nazi officer cap, this Luger German artillery pistol, and even this Hitler youth armband. And then this one right here, photograph of Adolf Hitler that was looted from a German household in 1945. This exhibit shows what life was like for your sol standard soldier during World War II. It has so many things that I do not feel like I could give it that in this short amount of time I can give it justice. So you have to make sure that you come here to this museum yourself just to see everything that goes on here. It's just absolutely amazing. And you definitely need to check this place out, guys. Alright guys, to finish up this video, we have traveled out to the Chattanooga National Cemetery. Because I was going to finish the video at the Medal of Honor Heritage Center, but I thought where would be a better place to bring this video to a close than the tribute to the Andrews Raiders, as well as the burial site for the first four Medal of Honor recipients. We got John M. Scott, Marion A. Ross, Samuel Robertson, and Samuel Slavens. This is the resting place for the first four Medal of Honor recipients who were all hung here June 18, 1862. I hope you all enjoyed this video. It was a very deep video to me. It was a very important video. I hope I did good enough job to bring the respect that these men and women that served our country deserve. Make sure you guys like the video. Comment below where you think I should go next and where what was your favorite part of this video. Make sure to check out our Discord so that you can get early access to videos as well as our Patreon to help fund me on these adventures exploring these amazing places and learning this amazing history. Make sure to check in the description below. I have the link for the Medal of Honor Heritage Center down there. And if you are ever in the town of Chattanooga, make sure to visit there. It's only like $13 a person. It is amazing, just definitely worth checking out. It's a very humbling experience, very awe-inspiring. Just, you, you want to go there. From your friend, The Damn Guide, I wish you all a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, and night. Goodbye, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.